Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy, Tom. And today's going to be kind of what I'm considering my Halloween special. Just because there's nothing too scary about code, except for debugging, maybe. But what we're going to be talking about in this video are just like really bizarre languages that actually do exist. And some of these were very shocking to me. I thought they were hilarious. So we're going to show you a bunch of different computer languages that actually apparently exist and are usable. I'm not going to sit there and teach you how to code these languages because I have no idea myself. I'm not sitting here trying to learn all these, but this should just be kind of fun to show you what exists. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Now, the first language we're going to be talking about is called Aussie++. This one's actually very new at the time of filming this, maybe only a few weeks old, I believe. This was actually from a subreddit called uh, Programming Humor, and someone was just making a joke about making a language in kind of natural Australian, you know, speech, I guess you would say it, like accent or whatnot. And somebody actually was like, you know what, I'm going to make it. And here it is. So this is originally written in C++, and it's pretty interesting. You know, some of the stuff I can figure out what it is, like hit the sack a thousand. That's obviously like a sleep for uh, one second. But you got some pretty interesting stuff in here. Good day, mate. There's a lot of swearing in this uh, program language, as you can see kind of in here a little bit. And uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of this code I'll post in the description below along with the actual website in case you want to look a little deeper into it or even download it and give it a try. If you do, let me know what you rate it. I want to know what which weird languages works the best for you. Another interesting thing about this language, is instead of using like the little curly brackets, they use the greater and less than symbol, which in here they're calling boomerangs. Another cool thing is you can actually write your code upside down. Obviously, the big joke is that everything they do down there is upside down. So this code right here, Dreamtime, is the same line as here, and it'll work exactly the same, even though this one's upside down, and that one's just regular way up. So yeah, this was one that I thought was pretty kind of funny. I like this one a lot, and it was based off Reddit. The next one we got here is lol code or law code and it's basically like you're talking like you're texting like in high school or something i honestly don't text like this so yeah it was invented by adam Lindsay in 2007 so here you got uh pretty much like i'm in your loop up variable one so that's kind of counting one two three four is var bigger than 10 k thanks and then you got like a return down here that's just, okay, thanks, bye. So this one was uh, a little bit more readable just because, you know, I know how a lot of this stuff is really supposed to say. So, yeah. <laughs> now this one actually caught me off guard. I was very surprised by this one. It looks like it's written possibly in Python and it's called Trump script. So it was originally made as a joke, obviously. And it's no longer supported. Probably many of these languages I'm going to be going over are probably no longer supported. They were just made as a fun little joke or project. They're obviously probably not going to be spending their whole life supporting these languages. But this one had some very interesting descriptions to it. No floating point numbers, only integers. Americans never do anything halfway. All numbers must be strictly greater than 1 million. So you can't use numbers that are like 100 or 50. It has to be a number over 1 million. So that can definitely cause some difficulties there. Instead of true or false, you got fact or lie. And error messages, so debugging in this is probably very hard. Error messages basically just give you random quotes from Trump himself. So you never really know what's actually going wrong. And uh, yeah, that one was pretty funny. So here's an example of the code. You got, you know, like an if statement here. If all of us realize the light. And then the else down here. Else the results will be bad. Uh, you got, and then this is, I'm guessing, your return here. Or your stop. America is great. And then so for like, say, or maybe message box, I believe this is maybe. So this election say, 
Hello World. So this is basically Hello World, I guess, in uh, Trump script. But yeah. Now this one I know is definitely no longer supported. The guys were like, hey, we just did it as a joke. Like, we, we need to move on with our lives, okay? So, yeah. Now this one is named Brainfuck. And for a dang good reason. This right here is Hello World. It's basically like just complete gibberish looking. It's insane. And it only really uses kind of like these symbols that you see here. This was invented by Urban Muller in 1993, actually. So it's a it's pretty old languages. Um, probably one of the first like really strange languages that were made as a joke. But yeah, this will definitely mess with your brain. Next up, we have Shakespeare. This one I couldn't find much coding on or much information, but it's basically made to look like an actual Shakespeare playwright. So you got like Act 1, Hamlet's insult and flattery. Scene 1, the insulting of Romeo. I have no idea what this code means right here. This was just an example I was able to pull. And there's real no explanation to what this actually means. But it does look like an actual like opening to a scene on a page so kind of interesting what this actually does let me know if you find out i'm not going to be testing it to be honest white spaces now this was originally an april fool's joke uh created by edwin brady and chris morris so this code right here you're seeing is not what you would actually normally see it's all done with spaces and tabs so where you see these spaces would actually be spaces. Tabs would be actual tabs. So the code's basically invisible. I cannot even imagine trying to debug something like this. So if I was to write code, like down here, I mean, this is what the code, this is what coding would look like. Space, 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 tab, space, space, tab. Go to the next line, you know, space, space, tab, tab, oops, tab, tab. Space, 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 space. There's my code right there. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. So this is more for visual effect. This is not what the code actually looks like. It's basically invisible using only spaces and tabs. Good luck debugging something like this if you make a mistake. Like, seriously, good luck. But that's probably why it's an April great April Fool's joke. Give it to one of your programmers. Say, hey, I need you to learn this new language. It's what we're going to be transitioning to over the next year. You got a week to learn it. Save it for April Fools. <laughs> Next up, we got another one that's really kind of fun. Uh, chicken. It's just called chicken. And the only word used is chicken. It was uh, made by, I'm probably going to butcher this, by a Swedish guy named Torbjorn Saberschitterderd. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I, <laughs> I'm already bad with American names. I can't even pronounce another one. So the idea here, I think, I'm not really sure, but the amount of chickens that you put in a line means something. So if you have one chicken, maybe that's like an if. And then if you have like, you know, four chickens, maybe that's like a message box of some sort. I have no idea. I couldn't figure this one out either. Not a whole bunch of documentation on there. If I do find videos after I do this that kind of explain it better than what I'm doing, I'll definitely add those to the description below along with the link to where you can get this kind of syntax for you to download if you want to play with it. Next up, we have Arnold C. Developed by Lori Hartika. Something like that. And this is basically Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's showtime. Talk to the hand. Hello world. You have been terminated. This one's a little bit easier to understand. Talk to the hand. That's either a print or a message box. You have been terminated is a return, basically, I think. Yeah, it's showtime. I'm guessing it's just the beginning of the function. Um, so I'm not really sure on that one. But this one was pretty easy to actually kind of somewhat understand just by movie references. It comes from a few movies he was in. Obviously, Terminator. I forget the other. There's like four movies that all this kind of phrasing was taken from. All starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as the main guy. Now, this one is called Chef. It was developed by David Morgan Marr. Chef, not to be confused from the Muppet guy, 
but it's supposed to look like a recipe. So here's the code, and it looks like a recipe. Ingredients, 72 grams of you know beans, 100 and 100 eggs, zucchini, uh, method, put potatoes into mixing bowl, put lard into mixing bowl. Once again, not really sure what this does. Serve one, I'm guessing, is like the return, I guess. Method might be like the beginning of a function. Ingredients might be variable assignment. I'm not really sure. But yeah, this one's basically just made to look like a recipe. This would honestly be great in like a war because I could see someone like sneaking this into a recipe book, sending it off to, you know, a spy or something, and then they could enter the recipe into the computer and it would actually spit out like, you know, some message, hidden message, but it would, you know, someone taking a glance at this is just going to be like, oh, they have a, like their mother's recipe, you know, handed down to them or something. So I could see this one being very useful as like a secret delivery system, you know, write it on paper, deliver it, they upload it, boom, they got something going on in their computer. <clears throat> Next is Oik. No joke, this was apparently originally developed for orangutans. I guess the idea here was, can we teach an orangutan, orangutan how to code? You know, using something very simple. Once again, I have no idea what is going on here. And if I don't, don't think an orangutan would really be able to do it either. Unless he's smarter than me, I guess, maybe. But yeah, it's basically just oik with like a period or a question mark or an explanation mark after it. And based on the order of how it is in that line, it, it performs some types of, you know, command or action. So once again, another language, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what the results of this experiment ever were. I couldn't find anything on it. If you know where it is, let me know in the comments below. I would love to see if we actually taught an orangutan how to use this. Yeah. Now, this one probably looks a little familiar, kind of like Morse code, and that was the idea. It's called Remorse. Now, unfortunately, the coding never really got finished. There was in the works of a Remorse 2, which pretty much went nowhere. Even the Remorse version 1 never really got finished, and it was never clear what its purpose was. Was it meant to be some type of way to send code through Morse code? Was it just meant to be fun? Was it meant to be a challenge? Nobody really knows why this was created in the first place and unfortunately never got finished. But I'm guessing this is the beginning of Hello World because you see starting at the bottom, it's W-O-R-L-D, explanation point, and then that makes a new line. So then down here, I guess it works from the bottom up. You would put like hello. But yeah, obviously this is not Morse code for the letter O, so not really sure how to interpretate that. It just seems like very more complexity to actual Morse code. Next, we got if you've been on the internet, especially on Reddit, 4chan, those kind of websites, you've probably seen what's called as let. And that's basically where you replace certain letters with numbers. So as you can see, let three. You know, it looks like a backwards E, so L-E-E-T. You can do stuff like uh, a 5 looks like an S, so you got best. And that's really all it is. 1 looks like an I. So this one, it, you can still pretty much understand what's going on here. You just might have to look at it a second. So, you know, it says like with your hide, L-O-L-O-L. Not sure what that does. But yeah, I'm sure if you've been around on the internet, let's been around, I mean from when I can remember even the internet existing. So I'm not sure uh, what the purpose of this one is here. Pretty much like all of them. <laughs> now this one is Amarapla, or Oh My God, Roll on the Floor. <laughs> this was invented by uh, Georgia Borza, and this is Hello World here. So you just got kind of like LOL is LOL, LOLs is LOL. <laughs> WTF, LOL is like zero. So, I'm sure there's people out there that, who actually talk like this. Oh, and BRB. I mean, everybody knows that. That's probably like a return, I'm guessing. 
or enter. Yeah. So if you talk like that in real life, maybe this is the code for you. Who knows? Now, for all you music lovers out there, this one, I can't show you the code here. I actually have to have an image because this actually uses meta files. And apparently if you play this code through music, it's supposed to have like a jazz like sound. So this is Hello World. And I would love to throw a challenge out there real quick. I'll put a link on this. And if anybody can play this music, I have no music talent like at all. I learned the recorder when I was like in elementary school and that was like in the story for me. If you can play this, I'm throwing a challenge out there. Play this on whatever instrument you know and upload a video, link it in the description or the comments below. I wanna see what code sounds like. That would be so cool. So this is Hello World. I wanna hear what it sounds like on a piano, guitar. I don't know if this is universal on any instrument or one specific. If you know, let me know what instrument this is meant for. Couldn't really find any information out about that. But yeah, it just basically reads based where on the dots are, the sharps, the flats, all that. And uh, yeah, that's Hello World. I'm not sure how you really run it. I'm guessing it runs from an actual image file, maybe. Or I guess it's from, yeah, a meta file, which I don't know, like, nothing about. So, educate me. Now we got Hello World here using a language that was invented in 1998. So another pretty old one by Ben Olsen instead. Uh, it's basically named after the eighth circle of hell, you know, so what do you expect from a language like this? The language is pretty much meant to be impossible to code in. It's supposed to be the most challenging language there is. Is uh, uh it's named Malbolge. Malbolge, maybe? I think I also forgot to mention on that one using the music, it's called Velato. Just throwing that back out there in case I didn't say that. And finally, we come to our final one, which also involves an image. The idea behind this language, it's called Pite, Pate, Pite, Pate, Pite, I don't know. Uh, but it's meant to look like abstract art. So here's another image, and this is the actual code right here. Kind of the idea here is it uses boxes, and it has a flow. You can change the way it flows, but by naturally, it pretty much just goes to the right, and anything up it does so our first block of code here our command whatever is this little blue square then you have this big blue square that means something i don't know so then it would flow up here to this little thing to this color pink there and it just kind of flows and it's made to look like abstract art and basically each block depending on the size and the hue of the color it means something so I don't think anybody can technically read this very well. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to run this through the executable program for this language and have it kind of decode it into actual code. And then when you make your changes, when you compile it, I'm assuming it just does a picture again. Not really sure on that one, but yeah. If you guys have any other languages that you've heard of that I did not cover in this, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's tons more out there. Let me know. I might do a part two. This was kind of just a fun video to do for Halloween. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely hit that subscribe button. My channel is mostly all about automation, mostly with 90% of it being with the programming language known as auto hotkeys. But I do branch out from time to time. I do fun videos like this. I have started doing hardware videos showing you how to build circus on breadboards and then have the breadboard communicate with your computer and even auto hockey sometimes. I'll be getting into those a little bit later on. And I also have done some other languages, JavaScript, Python, how to build a Chrome extension to automate your work. So definitely hit that subscribe button, that like button, and I will see you guys on the next one.